Education is the soul of a nation as it determines the future of its country. Its importance can never be overemphasized. In fact, in most parts of the world, education is regarded as a fundamental human right. The acquisition of educational degrees and certificates used to be the aim of every student, and this usually was backed up with the support of parents. Sadly, Nigeria's level of education has deteriorated badly. Nigeria continues to devote a negligent proportion of her annual budget to education, completely at variance with the 26% global benchmark by UNICEF. Close to 15 million children of school age are currently not in school, albeit through a combination of hostile circumstances, including insecurity, poverty, and poor, poor planning. There's a total loss of confidence by stakeholders in our educational system. At the same time, prohibitive tuition fees, amongst other factors, are a barrier to the country's private universities. If you're not amongst the 1% who can afford the exorbitant costs of private schools, you are at the mercy of public schools, a system whose standards, as we all know, has failed us. On top of this, many eligible young Nigerians can't even gain admission into public universities, as the education system has not been able to fully enroll its rapidly rising population. This travesty, in many ways, has endangered the prosperity of our nations. Millions of Nigerians are now half-educated, and over 60 million, or 30%, are actually illiterate. But the success of a student is not just the sole responsibility of an entity, but a joint collaboration of some stakeholders, parents, governments, and teachers, who have a lot of responsibilities and roles to play in education to make it successful. Today, sadly enough, the quest for quick wealth has compromised the value of education and thrown our once proudly upheld morals out of the window. Once where we had scholars as role models, our youths now look up to questionable characters as role models, no matter how checkered their past is. Our youth due to bad examples of leadership and disregard for social, societal values, much prefer the shortcuts that will provide temporary but not long-lasting sustainable gains. To worsen the situation, some parents even welcome benefits derived from these unscrupulous ventures with no questions asked. It is only when these major stakeholders perform their roles effectively that the students can record unblemished success. And as with every venture, the head has to be in a good place for the rest of the body to function properly. Very well said. Much more powerful than money. Highest quality education, which includes very well kept secrets, is every man's ticket to freedom, miracles, good fortune, and prosperity. Well, Today, in Nigeria, over 70% of our children are stuck in educational poverty, unable to understand basic sentences or solve basic mathematical problems. When we think of Nigeria's most critical developmental needs today, education is top five. First, good leadership. Second, good food from thriving agriculture. And third, a minimal standard of living, which is accounted for in increased education, security, health care, jobs, and general progressive well-being. The educational system has come a long way, regressing in certain areas and remaining stagnant in others. The very first primary school in Nigeria launched in 1843 and the first secondary school in 1854. The first university, University of Ibadan, came in 1948. Today, we have private schools, digital schools, and innovative learning initiatives established by very resilient entrepreneurs. Some of our greatest desires include good health, good relationships, and good education, regardless of segregative factors such as tribe, language, religion, not or south, orphan or disabled, we want none of our children cut off from the highest quality education achievable. Not the overworked 10-year-old boy, 
being enslaved in a construction site, not the lost 14-year-old boy cleaning windshields as we drive by, not the innocent 13-year-old girl forced into child marriage and slavery. If we fail to prioritize and strengthen education for every single citizen, we are suppressing the deepest dreams and the highest potentials of our entire nation. We are limiting our development, our children, our GDP, and our global positioning. Education prepares us for every challenge we may face in life. Education gives us the confidence to walk through any path and the boldness to take our seats at the highest tables. World-class indigenous education in Nigeria will defeat poverty bloodily. Let's watch this special report. Perspectives will be right back. Education is the most important sector in every country. Due to its importance in building the foundation of every nation. In Nigeria, the educational system is in a sorted crisis of infrastructural decay, neglect, waste of resources, and sordid conditions of service. The country has over 10 million out-of-school children and another 27 million children in schools are performing very poorly. Millions of Nigerians are half-educated and over 60 million or 30% are illiterate. On top of this, many eligible young Nigerians can't gain admission into public universities. At the same time, Prohibitive tuition fees, among other factors, are a barrier to the country's private universities. So what are some of the factors hindering the growth of the sector? One major one would be funding. This is the biggest problem confronting Nigeria's education system. The percentage of the budget allocated to education annually is abysmally low. If this can be fixed, lots of concerns around the incessant strikes dilapidated structures and money for research would be taken care of. In 1978, the Academic Staff Union of Universities was established to represent academic staff in universities. Since then, there have been strikes almost every year disrupting the academic calendar. To stop these annual disruptions, the government must increase budgetary allocations to the sector and honor agreement that have been signed with the unions. The only way that strikes will be stopped is if the welfare of all staff, from teachers to lecturers, is prioritized. If we hope to thrive as a nation and live up to our name as the giants of Africa, then our leaders must, as a matter of urgency, prioritize the educational sector if we intend to produce the leaders of tomorrow. Ikena Kingsley, Arise News. Yet again, another, another cause of concern. One would even have thought that investing in education should be the most the you know, highest priority and most critical because at the end of the day, if you don't plant the right seeds, the fruits won't grow properly. Absolutely. Do you understand? And if you look at the abysmal level, I remember when I was in school, mm. even pronunciations, you know, they would say the. You know, you had to pronounce the TH. Okay. Now it's think them, those. You know, it's as, <laughs> it's as if, you know, it yeah. has just been totally lost. Yeah. And it makes you wonder sometimes, you know, that why we are just not getting this right. Mm -hmm. Our educational standard should not be compromised. You just said now in your, in your, in your intro, you spoke about schools that were created since 1840-something. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You know. you, I mean, in Bazon Chising Hospital, people used to come from abroad. You know, a century later, what's yes. I'm showing for you all of that? The hard work of our ancestors, where have they gone? What are we showing today for the educational sector? I mean, who can, can you tell me what Nigeria is proud of, what we can compete globally with Forget in it. terms of education? Do you know even our I degrees now? I tell you. Even our degrees now are not really accepted. Do you understand? Great. And have you ever gotten any university graduates write an application letter? Oh, oh my goodness. You want us to talk about that? And you look and you're thinking, and then I don't know if you've seen any of those skits where they ask, they ask the most basic questions, something like maybe spell hippopotamus, mm. or they'll tell you, oh, show us, the, see us, look at the clock and tell us how 6.30 should be, or they'll ask them something that you would think a 10-year-old would know, and these are, yeah, universe, these are used coppers, right. and they have no clue. And within 2015 to now, it was estimated by a United Nations agency 
that the out of school children rate has doubled in Nigeria. Yes. I remember, I mean, it's years. up to 30%. Doubled. Yes, it's sad. And even more so, they don't even have enough space. For even, even though they are universities, there's not enough slots mm. to accommodate the amount of youths mm. that we have in Nigeria. So, I mean, the, our, our, our out of school children are up to, up to 30%. The most important sector is struggling. We have the petroleum <sighs> industry struggling. We have the, every area is struggling. We have every area struggling. struggling. We have PVC. We have even money struggling. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the man that was naked in the bank the other day, stripped, 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 stripped naked. I saw that. I saw you understand? that. I saw another one the other day sitting down, looking like a nice, you know, he could he could be a teacher, mm. looking very well, but sitting on the road. I had to give him one thousand naira. He hadn't used it for four days. Even to come here this morning was a oh. little bit struggle. So let's not even, I mean, there are too many. Let's just focus on education that we're talking mm. about now. It's abysmal failure and the way forward. Mm. So we are having, we're heading for a short break. Just stay with us. Moving on to our distinguished guests, starting with Helen Prest Ajayi, a lawyer, author, literacy advocate, and director of Educatrix Limited a company that provides educational books, tools, and resources designed to support and aid the easy learning and acquisition of the English language. After practicing law for 15 years, Helene's passion for teaching, after witnessing the decline in Nigeria's educational system, led her to spend over a decade volunteering at underserved schools. Helene has written a number of children's educational books, the latest titled The Complete English Grammar Guide. Welcome to the program, Helen Prest. Ajayi, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. And joining Helen on the panel for this interesting subject is Abolaji Osime, the Chief Executive Officer and founder of Global International College, a secondary and sixth form college with branches in Lagos and Abuja, and representative of representative offices in Nebadon, sorry. Global International College is one of the leading providers of secondary, university prep, and foundation degrees for international universities in Nigeria. Abalaji wears many laurels in the educational sector and is a change agent who is very passionate about educating Nigerian children to ensure that they become globally competitive. She is also passionate about addressing the systemic problems with education at state and federal levels and has consulted for the Federal Ministry of Education and many state governments. So it's great to have both of you here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having you, <laughs> Madam Helen. Eh? Beauty you? and brains. Thank you. They say people can't have both, but you have both. <laughs> eh? Thank you. You're too kind. I'm too kind. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. You Thank know you. me now. Okay. Anyway, let's start. I know your pet peeve. One of your pet peeves is the literacy, lack of literacy amongst children when they're very young. And you are a firm believer that the seed should be planted from infancy and that will help and guide them the path that which they will, which they will grow educationally. Yeah. So I want to ask you, what are the pertinent things kids should learn between the ages of five and six or four and six to enable them and empower them to at least be ready for the foundation of good education? No, thank you for that. It's not really a pet peeve but it's the symptomatic problem we have in our educational system, mm. in the sense that we have to look at the foundation. And the foundation of all education is literacy. Mm. Literacy unlocks learning. If a child is not literate, they cannot move ahead in the educational journey. Mm -hmm. So what I would like us to focus on in this country is the primary stages of school education. That's primary one, when children come into school, and then not just focus on that, focus on literacy. We need to spend more time teaching children the fundamentals, which is mm -hmm. the alphabet. I mean, it sounds very basic. And pronunciation, because that is really another thing a lot of Nigerians don't get right. Well, pron uh, pronunciation is English secondary. English is our linga franca. We have, no, we have no excuse. Pronunciation is secondary. The important thing is to understand mm -hmm. the basics of the building blocks of literacy, the building blocks of reading, the building blocks of writing. 
and we need to take it slower and be more deliberate about it and spend more time on it. One, mm -hmm. because we are a nation. English is not our first language. I agree. Though... But that's what we speak. Mm -hmm. well, we have different well, accents. Not, we do have different it's accents, but that really, is the that's it. That's what we speak with. Right. We don't speak French. Well, no, if you get to the airport, you are spoken to in English. I know that. But what my point is, that people can understand. But my and point read what is, English is our lingua franca. That's okay. what everybody communicates okay. with. Mm -hmm. I cannot speak French to you. I'll have to speak English. Right. But do you agree that pronunciation is secondary? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, pronunciation is secondary. Totally agree with that. But English is our first language. I would like to also talk on that issue. It is not our lingua franca. Mm. It's supposed to be a mm. lingua franca. What do you mean it's supposed to be? Okay. How are we taught in schools? Okay. With what let language? Me, let me, can, if I can yeah. edify mm -hmm. on that. We have a huge population. Mm -hmm. The majority, nine, mostly 90% of the population, mm -hmm. is not really engaged in speaking English. That's the failure of our I system. I would be surprised at well, that. It, yes. That's the failure of our system. Maybe not as high, but yes. In so 1960, you would have said we that. 90%. We have, mm. yes. Because, mm. first of all, we have to understand it's not our first language. Mm -hmm. People speak their language. We're a multi-ethnic society. People speak their language at home. Mm -hmm. Le the, the, the cities are a minuscule part of our population. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about the entire country. They speak their language at home and then perhaps come to school at the age of five mm -hmm. for the first time, having only spoken their native language. Mm -hmm. Then you bring them to this environment and then start speaking to them as if English is our lingua franca. Yeah, but Helen, this happened 60 years ago, 50 years ago, and we coped. No, we didn't Don't cope. Now. We didn't cope. We were taught with English. No, we didn't cope. That's why you mm -hmm. are sick. That, that, that is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Colonialism came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example, just a simple example. Colonialism came and, and, and brought English. Exactly. Now, Ruth, if I were to take you now, take you and say French, now as you are. In my old age. Whatever age. No. Mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm. age. Whatever but if I age. learned French for okay, five. No, 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 no. French. Mm -hmm. You have to have the ability to learn that fast, number yes. one. Yes. Learning a language is extremely difficult. You absorb better when you're younger. I, we all much did, younger. We you all absorb did. much faster. Are you trying to make a point? Yes, I'm trying to make a point. Mm -hmm. yes. Learning a language okay. is extremely difficult. So only those who have are quick enough and have the ability enough to be able to grasp, uh, grasp quickly mm. that language will succeed in moving forward. If time is not taken, if enough time is not taken to really teach that uh, 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 as a second language, not as a primary language with the assumption that we all understand everything, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of people fall by the way, which we are seeing the results of. Mm -hmm. Not only will a lot of people fall by the wayside, you have to understand that every other subject, which is why the educational system is, well, that's one of the reasons. There are many other reasons. I think there are many other reasons. Of course, there are many totally other reasons that, why it's failing. But the crux is that as they're progressing through the educational system, because they have to understand through the prism okay. of understanding English, we find they can't cope. Okay. And the reason being mm. that we did not spend, we have mm. to spend far more time. So how did we grasping. cope before? We when were, Nigeria was buoyant, when Nigerians were making we waves, when we had the education, when we had the um, University of Ibadan teaching well, hospitals, how many people when we had scholars. School? How many? Yeah, mm. but my point is, if no. the right amount of monies were invested no. into the educational sector. Well, I don't believe we've ever coped. So are you saying that, okay, so how else can you teach? If English is not our first language, what language are you supposed to now use no, to teach children? No, I'm not saying we should teach. I'm saying we need to be more deliberate about yeah. the acquisition of that very important basic language and gateway to education. We have to be more deliberate. Our own we education. have to take time. We should mm -hmm. not base it on the assumption that we all speak English and therefore not mm -hmm. break it down and spend. If, let, if I was the, 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 the Minister of Education, or, mm -hmm. I would spend primary one on that. Yeah, makes only, sense. Only. Only. On what specifically? Learning English. 
English. On, the, English on the basics. Oh, Alphabets. Yes, Putting sentences together, understanding sentences. But isn't that hard English? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's we rush through. We even we, from the from the sixties, or more so now. What's your? You see, the sixties. Very few people went to school. When you look at the population, the part, the, the 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 number of people who had access to education, who were even able to. That's why it was such Future a limited. big deal. Mm. When you went to university, the whole village came out to mm. celebrate you. It was a big deal because they, not enough people had the ability even to transcend. It's very difficult to learn a language and to be educated through another language. It's extremely difficult. And we need to take more time, we need to take it slower, mm -hmm. we need to really enforce that so that the understanding is there. Well, it doesn't help that the population has also changed. Well, that is another problem. That's another problem that is an issue. the huge amount but of population. It, that even doesn't really matter. If we take the steps at that primary stage to actually teach children slowly. Mm. And the book you just released targets this? Yes, it mm -hmm. does. Okay. Not for primary, but it goes back. What grade is it for? It's for prim uh, upper primary, okay. universe, uh, secondary school, and uh, university, and office. Okay, and how widespread is it now? Oh, well, With schools, it's, it's public, is private? It's, no, no, it's, wide, it's widespread very, in mm -hmm. public, and it's also in private schools, because that's it's practical. Mm -hmm. I believe in being practical. And that is one of the major bains, and then we do not invest enough in our teachers mm -hmm. and in our, we mm -hmm. need to target our education spending on students i think that's the core problem not education. more than anything else yeah. but we have to bring in bolaji now because um it's mm -hmm. a four-way conversation so bolaji are you are you there with us yes absolutely i'm listening Intently. Uh, Bolaji, yeah. uh, Helen has just thrown me one salvo here because i never thought yeah, so i, I never totally agree with her. yes i never thought about English, using English to teach children was ever a problem. Because as far as I know, mm -hmm. that's all teachers have always taught us with. Do you understand? Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I see where she's coming from and I can all, uh, understand her views, but I still think the most pertinent problem here is lack of mm -hmm. finance and lack of growth in that sector. With a lot of funding. Yes, because at the end of the day, challenges. if you start to learn French, she just told me that I should come and start learning French at this age. Can you imagine? <laughs> but if you start to learn French by the age of five, I really think whatever language you're taught with would help you grow or get you more versed in that language. But anyway, yeah. let's, not, let's also, because there's so many issues and we're really pressed for time, let's also talk in this case now about the improvement of government schools. What can the government do? What are the major problems? Because I know that you're a well-versed scholar and you're, you know, you're a strong crusader for education. But what are the major pertinent problems we are facing now? Aside from what Helen mentioned about English being our second language. And what can the government do to address these problems? Um yeah, we have, a, we have a very dysfunctional system right now, very, very dysfunctional. And the sad thing is that 80% of our population is in, in government schools. So if we do not uh, focus on the government schools, then we're looking for problems. I, I hope you guys can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. And there are a lot of problems. There are a lot of problems because there's infrastructure problems. So mm -hmm. you have classrooms that are full of about 100 students to one teacher. Some subjects don't have class teachers, you know, um, a lot of the, they, they don't have textbooks, you know, in most of the schools. The teacher quality is also not exactly the best. So the curriculum itself is irrelevant because they are teaching for the 20th century, right? Yes, now. you did say, you There's mentioned no that. digital literacy in our curriculum. Pardon? You mentioned the curriculum, I remember. So, so, Yes, the, the curriculum is largely irrelevant because this curriculum that we have in Nigeria was actually for people who wanted to work in civil service. You know, it was done in the, mm. you know, years ago. We've tried to, we're working with them to try and look at, because we're talking about a digital economy now. Yeah. So we're preparing children to go into an economy that is totally digitalized. Wherever they go, they have to be able to use their computer. They have to be, we're talking about AI, we're talking about robotics, we're talking about coding. 
when you join any organization now, they expect you to be very detailed. Mm. You, know, you must be literate. So you were talking about uh, literacy before. Yes, that's reading and writing and all of that. But also digital literacy is so crucial. Yeah. And yeah. in order to even improve on the reading and writing, we need to use um, what we have in technology as okay. well to be able to access. Because well, access is a problem. We have over 20 million out of school right now. And the challenge is that how do we get all these kids in school? We do not have the infrastructure. Government doesn't have the money to be able to educate all its children. You know, we are growing at such an um, exponential rate. You know, 400 million in 2050. And we're 200 million, 60% of wow. them are young people. So that's the challenge that government is trying to grapple. But what about the these young people? What about the private sector? What and role can they play? For example, in Lagos. In Lagos, for example, we have 18,000 private schools as opposed to 1,600 government schools. Wow. So private sector is so hard to provide education all over Nigeria. That's what we're trying to do. So we're partnering with them and saying, but it's expensive. Education is a very expensive venture because you have to have the infrastructure, you have to have the teachers, you have to pay them well, you have to have very good textbooks, you have to have technology infrastructure now. So it's quite expensive as well. So most schools have to borrow, and you're borrowing at 25%. Government is not backing you. And there's so many... Um, taxes from government. There are over 18 taxes that we pay wow. and levies. You know, so government doesn't even support like that. So you are trying to support government in providing education, but everything you are getting is like taxes. So it's just a bit of a dysfunctional system. Mm. But what about the quality of the teachers? Because I don't know if you saw one skit a while back where, I won't call names, a former governor gave a teacher, post teacher, something to read. And it was an abysmal failure. Mm. I mean, even basic sentences or basic words she couldn't pronounce, and she obviously didn't even know what it meant. So I know that there used to be a teacher's training school. I don't know if it still exists till today. But is there a way that how can you improve the quality of the teachers that even teach these kids? Is that so important? You know, mm -hmm. fundamentally, you cannot give what you don't have. And yes. that's what I keep saying when I talk to government, that if you are putting a teacher who is not qualified in front of students who want to be doctors, students who are going to be the leaders in this nation, what do you expect? So in Finland, you have to have a PhD. You have to have a degree before you mm -hmm. go before, before you teach. But in Nigeria, the opposite is exactly what mm -hmm. we're doing. So you can get into a college of education, which qualifies you to teach a primary school with four credits or three credits in, in YF. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we are putting our worst before our best. Mm -hmm. This is the wow. issue. So how do we do that? And we're expecting them to teach. How can you teach something you don't know? Right. And you know, yeah. so government needs to wake up and say, look, mm. minimum degree. You must mm -hmm. have a degree. Mm -hmm. In fact, go and have a master's. Mm -hmm. yes. So that we know that we are putting our best before our best. Mm -hmm. And we are getting the best. Because, you know, the challenge while we're having what uh, Helen was talking about is the fact that the teachers themselves need to know how to teach literacy. Mm. They have to know. They have to know how to teach numeracy. So when they haven't passed maths or something in, in, in university and you're saying, oh, yeah, go and teach. So that's the challenge that we're having. So government mm -hmm. needs to do something drastically. They're trying to do a lot, but they need to do something drastically about teacher education and improve the quality of our teachers and the student, teachers that are student, um, teaching our students. So, okay. so critical. Thank we're doing you. a lot of in private sector. We are improving the skills of our teachers. We have professional development, but it needs to be embedded in the institutional framework mm. from the Federal Ministry of Education. And it's something, something across board, not just Lagos, you know, whatever, mm. even in the north, to improve the quality of teachers. Okay. Completely agree with you. Hopefully our next um, leadership will prioritize education as much as we all need it to be prioritized. My question goes for both guests. Uh, we'll take it one at a time. Maybe yes. you can start. Sex education. Our Minister of Education last year sometime said he wanted to completely abolish it, remove it from the curriculum. And the Nigerian Feminist Forum pushed back against it. We are all women here. Um, sex education, for me, I think it's an important topic to be taught. We all learn from our parents, from schools, from religious institutions. We learn from our communities. But there are certain aspects that have been put into textbooks that our children also need to benefit from. What do you think about sex education being taught in schools or being removed from the curriculum? Uh, I actually don't recall being taught sex education when <laughs> I was in school. I have to be honest with Maybe you. Maybe a bit of it in biology, but not exactly. necessarily in production I think, organ and what I, Yes, I, I really think it was taught as part of biology. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe it should be taught within 
that biological mm -hmm. uh, that kind of what they want to remove from the curriculum well, entirely. How do you remove biology? From biology? The aspect of sex education could no, you I, just well, not be touched in school. I, it, I really have to understand what they meant because that's quite a wide field. Yeah, wide range. It's really been Kama Sutra. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really it's really oh, been manipulated. At this point in yes, time, yes, exactly. I believe perhaps that's what the the, the, the thinking behind not to confuse mm -hmm. the children. What do you say is being manipulated? The sex education, if you mm -hmm. look across the world, is being mm -hmm. manipulated. All the binary in and all kinds of things, she, and perhaps that is what is behind yes. the the thought. I re I recall when I was in school, mm -hmm. it was part of biology, right. reproductive system. What happens? Mm -hmm. How do, how uh, a child is created, right. which is Part so it can be refined, I what it needs so. to be part of be the education in some way. Yeah, I think it what she means is that it should be in, in the, it should be this, this it is like biology, yes. or it's right. not about mm -hmm. sexual preference yes. or changing or your I, sex I, or being I don't those binary. <laughs> being I don't think about physical education. They need to know about the body parts and yes, yes, yes. That's what she's saying, right? Even protecting yourself sexually and things like that. That's biology. That's biology. This is a sex change that she does right in biology, and so I. I don't. I don't know what the curriculum is that the curriculum is so wide now. There are sixty something identities when it comes to well, I don't, Kishi. So yes, so that's mm. another area that's yes. too confusing. I think but it confuses within, kids. But, but I, we were taught within biology, and I yes. think we, I think mm -hmm. we, we did not too badly. <laughs> <laughs> and the biology, where's biology? I'm here. Uh, let's see your pretty face now. I'm liking this blonde. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, can you see me now? Yes. Yes, you can see you now. We were talking about oh. sex education, mm -hmm. but I think Helen yes. has sort of... Um, you have something to add to that? Add, 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 added her Actually, beauties. Actually, we debated that. You know, we have a forum called Education Reform Innovation Team. We have about 180 reformers on the platform. So we had an ongoing debate. I think what happened is that there was a... I can't remember the group that came in with the LGBT agenda oh. and um, there was a group that came in and met with government and they wanted the LGBT agenda um, to be in the curriculum so I think in government I mean of course government was like what this is not going to happen so there was mm -hmm. huge pushback but in pushing back you cannot throw the baby and the bath water out so mm -hmm. basically they're now saying you don't want sex education <laughs> sex education is extremely important exactly. because of what we're going through now in schools it's extremely important and um, it's part of what we teach right now. You know, it's no longer just biology, but it's also okay. part of um, mm -hmm. it's separate. social okay. you know, They put it in the curriculum. So I don't think, I think what the government needs to do is to make sure they monitor what's coming into the curriculum. And they are the ones that develop Absolutely. the curriculum. Yeah. So they make sure they don't allow stuff that is going to uh, be corrupting or influencing. Art. Because in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in the US, um, it's, it's all, LGBT, LGBT is taught and all of that, you know, gender change and all of that is taught mm -hmm. in the schools. So mm -hmm. they are permitted. So I think that was what um, a, lot, a lot of the NGOs now came and said, no, you cannot stop sex education. Mm -hmm. But what they're now yeah. trying to do, and I know a group that's working with them, is that let us look at the curriculum and we put the best things in the curriculum. Yeah, that's basic so basic we everything up. Okay. We can't do everything mm -hmm. up because it's very critical. No, no, okay, no, another mistake. thing I wanted to ask you is about the role of parents when it comes to oh. their children's education. As you know, there are a lot of high-flying parents who don't really have the time and effort that it takes to supervise your children and ensure they do their homework well and blah, blah, blah. So how important are the role of parents for their children's education? What's the disadvantage think, of having unavailable parents who don't have that much time? It's a big, it's a so important, that question is so important and thank you for asking that question. Because I always say to parents that they're first educators of their children. Yeah, exactly. We are not supposed to be educating their children. They need to lay the foundation with these young people. You know, we have a lot of young people coming with this with this uh, entitlement mentality. <laughs> young people who come to class and they're rude to teachers, and you know, they just think that everybody is going to fall aside and just do things for them. Mm. It's coming from the home. The way mm. we were brought up is not the way the kids are being brought up now. Mm. So a lot of the kids are being brought up by nannies because there are absent parents there. Uh -oh. So a parent will say, so long as I'm paying your school fees, so long as I'm doing this, so long as I'm doing that, we need to, you know, what is, children need love, they need time, mm. they need to pay attention to them. In fact, a lot of my kids come, at the age of 16, I was having a parenting seminar once, and my students said, call our parents, call our parents, we want to talk to them. When we were growing up, they were not there. Now they are dictating to us, this, wow. that, that. they were not there. You know, so parents mm -hmm. must understand that for all the money you're trying to make, 
If you do not focus on the people you're trying to make it for, these children are going to disgrace you in the future. Uh -oh. That's the problem. Because mm -hmm. a lot of social media stuff is now educating our children. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of television, a lot of the stuff that we're watching on Netflix is educating our children. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our children are in a state of serious confusion. That's mm -hmm. just the issue. So in the school, what I do in global is like I'm a mommy, I'm their mother. You know, so I look, I look at my old standards, old school, and I try and implement it. It's very challenging sometimes, but a lot of them appreciate it because I'm giving them the time. Mm -hmm. And they see the love coming. So parents need to, you know, replicate that. Even if you're busy during the week, when okay. you come back home, look at the homework. Mm -hmm. During the weekend, go and bond with them, sit with them. How are you doing? A lot of kids are talking about suicide. A lot uh -oh. of kids are talking about so many things uh -oh. now. We didn't, never used to hear that. We never used to hear mm -hmm. that. So there's something going on that parents need to pay attention to, that these kids are going through issues in, in class, mm. self-esteem, all mm. of the stuff. You need to talk to your children. Mm. You need to be there for them. You, know, you need to come to school on open day. Okay. When they're having programs, you need to be there. You cannot earn this money, and at the end of the day, it's mm. a waste. So basically, mm. it's so important, so critical, and I hope parents are listening to me today. Mm -hmm. You need to be there for your kids. You also mentioned, um, you also mentioned um, technical vocation. Because I remember um, one time I met the former, I think the present president of Sierra Leone. And if you remember, Sierra Leone at one time for about a year or so, a decade or so, sorry, a decade or so had this the war thing going on. And he said that the best artisans that they have now are those ones who could not go to school during the, 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 the war period. So is that something that also should be embraced? Where technical so, skills I, I just, I will come in handy. You are just mm. hitting the nail on the head. Back, back, back. I hope all these government people are watching. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Okay. I hope I so too. Your question. Yes. You know, the most important thing is vocational skills in Nigeria. Mm. We are in a country that we are developing, and therefore there's so much infrastructure that we need to do. So when I talk about um, in Ni the Nigerian universities have has capacity for only six hundred thousand students, one point nine million apply every single year. Wow! So mm. out of that one point nine million, at least over 700 or so do not have spaces in university. Mm. What are they doing? That's the question that the government should be asking. Mm -hmm. And vocational skills is the solution. When you are in England and you are, I mean, a lot of places, I don't want my child to be weekly, I don't want to be this, but about digital skills, mm. about technology, about coding, all of that is tech, um, techni technical and vocational skills. Mm. So we need to embed, and the Commissioner of Lagos State, uh, Shadi Adifisayo, she has started something that is very uh, innovative. And she has also ensured that trade subjects and vocational skills are part of the curriculum now. So okay. they're doing a new type of school, comprehensive schools, they call it comprehensive schools. So that is being Im embedded. And it's so important also, because you do not know what the gift of a child is. So a lot of parents say, go and do lawyer, go and do engineer. But this child says, I want to sing. I want to be an entertainer. I want to act. I want to go into the media. So we need to make sure we have both. Yes, mm -hmm. Nigerian parents want to have a degree. But make sure also they have a vocational skills. Many of them are super cooks now. Many of them are in the hospitality now. Many of them are coding now. So it's so important that we match that with our main curriculum to have vocational skills. Mm -hmm. And there's a deficit of that now. Uh, a lot of the technical schools are moribund. They're not doing well, but I think World Bank is doing a project trying to reform the technical schools and getting private sector to partner with government and, and you know, provide the equipment. Because at the end of the day, these students are going to private sector to go and work. Mm -hmm. So they need to know what to do in an automobile. Automobiles yes. mm -hmm. now are computers. You know, cars are computers. So you don't want someone to come and spoil your car because they didn't know how to repair it. So that's mm -hmm. why, and we can decrease this 35% unemployment rate yes. if we introduce vocational skills, you know, okay. and students can get something to do with their art before they go to university. They don't all have to go to university. Okay. Some of them mm -hmm. need to go technical. Yeah. Okay. Now, Helen, thank you so much, but don't go yet. If I can make Remember, we were. In, okay, ready to. Yes, yeah, okay, on okay go on. That this uh, technical schools, school those days had everything. Mm. It had branches. Those who, we had woodwork. We had uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 home carpentry home, and stuff like that. Carpentry, home economics mm. was uh, was uh, that's true. Yes, it was that's like true. that. That's true. So that those who were more academically inclined, okay, went Focus to on university. Their strength. Yeah. Yes, mm. and then those who were were able to use their 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 hand. They're more mm -hmm. less academically inclined, but enjoyed other aspects. Went 
to do the that, yes. It's because Nigeria as a whole looked down on 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 the on, vocational voca yes, on, mm. on, voc on vocational work. Mm. They looked mm -hmm. down. Everybody felt that they must. I don't believe everybody needs Probably to go to Probably a certain class looked down on it. Nigeria as a whole. That still Nigeria as a whole. 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 Not everybody is supposed mm -hmm. to go. So there's so many, there's there's so many people that actually learn it on their own. Like there's so many creative people who no, are learning carpentry, yeah, learning no, tailoring. Like they're so yeah, they come ambitious from, from that. that. They wasted so many years. Yes. Yes. Well, they wasted so many years. Yes, but mm. wasted, they wasted so many years. But they catch up, realized, does that make sense? They spent five years in the wrong place. In fact, one of the most successful Whereas industries. they started mm -hmm. initially, yes. they would have gone a, far, a long way. But look look at today. Entertainment, the creative sector is one of the most successful sectors in Nigeria today. Go on tap, like you rightfully said, early enough. But yes, right you need now, to guide stu mm -hmm. you need to guide students early yeah. enough. Yeah. For actually from primary primary six, mm -hmm. you should know where children mm -hmm. are right. going. Mm -hmm. And formal education is not the only it's education. Not, no, it's not the only education. In fact, today, so artificial intelligence is what matters. Right. There are so many people that are doing amazing things and they learn from their parents, learn from the community. No, which is why, why I said fantastic, which you know, why I said from the mm -hmm. beginning. Get it right. Yeah. That primary one. And the primary one. The mm -hmm. basics you need are, be, are to be able to read and write. When you're able to do that, you're able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. It's comprehension. Education mm -hmm. is right. about comprehending mm -hmm. what you need to know. Absolutely. And if you're unable to do that because you can't access the, the language needed to comprehend, you will find it difficult. Mm. Even the vocational work, you'll find it difficult. Because vocational work is not just by word of mouth. You have yeah. to do That's some also the reading the exercises. Of it, yes. mm -hmm. You have to comprehend what you're reading right. to be able to, to go. My biggest yeah. issue with the sector is what comes after, especially the formalized sector. So Nigerians go to school. Free and compulsory education is up until GSS3. Who is planning for that stage after they leave the free education, especially for those who don't have the funds to continue education? Who is planning for them after vocational? Well, we hope who is planning the right after enter. they graduate university? Who is so, planning yeah, after NYSE? Exactly yes. These yes. are things yes. that many schools actually proactively, they make sure that, oh, 70% of our graduates will go on to find jobs. Like it's your, you take it on as a KPI. Normal, it's your normal, yeah, are you talking about England? It's a normal country, yes. But we want Nigeria as to it be is now, we are even best as hoping that too. they can keep this young students mm -hmm. occupied. Like Henry right. just said, if you can't do the... But why go to school if they end up... Yeah, but, just but those are the issues yeah. that were facing. There was not much I embedded in them. Not like it's never this lost. Is, this is, this I do hope you realize that jobs are... Predicated on the financial Ab and of the economy. Of course, of course. If the of course. economy is not doing well, yes. And this is why we happens. have the lagging so educational system. But what just said now? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? They have one thousand nine, one one point nine million students applying for six hundred slots. So even to get them to study the basic tenets of education to get, enable them to work in future, mm. we don't even have enough slops. You are going as far as talking about mm. what jobs are available for them. When you meet people uh -uh. that have studied so hard, uh, worked so hard, and they're but that's still the, jobless. But that is the situation we find ourselves in. Still where they started eight years, nine years, ten years ago, it's... Um, okay, you, you know that you're speaking about that. I remember telling her to revisit this issue. Mm. I know that when I saw the BBC Pidgin English that had been launched, I remember thinking to myself, and I could still go back to look, this is English is our Ligua Franca. Why would you now be launching a Pigeon English channel? Do you understand? As if that's what the average person discusses or that's how the average mm. person converses. But there are people that need it though. Yeah, but Pigeon English, even the, but my point is mm -hmm. at any age, if this is what we have been taught in school okay. from the age of five, it's a language that we all should be able to speak. Said only isn't 90, it? 90 percent <laughs> are not there yet. Only yeah, 10 that's what we're saying. But let's have, let's, let's let's have an answer, answer yes. that one about the Pigeon English that should really, um, station. Because that just shows you yes, where we are BBC, now. Mm -hmm. BBC launching a Pigeon English channel mm -hmm. says a lot. Exactly. And it should make you think. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Because you know. what is the point of BBC? Mm. BBC wants to communicate to a group of people. Mm -hmm. They have probably found out that they are unable to communicate exactly. mm -hmm. in the formal English because mm -hmm. people do, the larger number of people just do not understand. Mm. And the whole purpose of radio or even a right is to be able to communicate. 
want mm -hmm. to send your ideas across to people so that you can influence whatever they think, perhaps, mm. or just give them information. They have found out that that way is not working. Mm. That's sad. So that, that's but really that sad. is a reflection a of the of times. Where we are exactly. Now. Absolutely. It's so we need my point. to walk mm -hmm. back from that. And I'm, as I said, there's nothing wrong with pigeon, by the way. It's a, it's mm -hmm. not nothing. Yeah, but are you going to teach pigeon in school? I think in university you can understand each other. I think that. But pigeon is broken English. I, which is so I we live think. spoken English I and then now no, no, it's no, like Creole in Sierra Leone. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Yeah, but that's their language. No, that's their language. Ruth, pigeon no. is not our official no, language. No, Ruth, it doesn't have to be official. You need in the twenty first century, you need many modes of communication. You need to be able to speak formal English. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to speak Pidgin English. Oh. Well, Would you travel instance, abroad and speak Pidgin English? I will go to the market and speak Pidgin English. Yeah, but if the educational system was supposed to be where it, it is be today... It's detrimental to my well-being if I'm unable because to speak Pidgin Because you have no choice, English, Helen. In the market. Yes, you have no choice but to speak Pidgin English. No. Because, because she wants to communicate I with people in the market. Mm -hmm. If things had improved, more people would be able to speak better no, English not, than Pidgin. Not, not, necessarily, mm. not necessarily. Well, Pidgin, okay. that we have to look. Let me tell you something, Ruth. There are many forms of communication. Mm -hmm. And as a forward-thinking person, you need to be able to speak all I of them. I can speak both, but I'm just saying... No, no, there's even not... slang. Mm -hmm. If you don't know... Oh, no, no, those are... Those are no, those no, 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 it's yes. a means the other party I know that for young people. But if you are making a presentation in the World Bank, to the World Bank, for example, and you come from Nigeria, are you going to read your speech? But what about those that are not presenting to World Bank? No, but I'm saying yes, that can work. Anyway. That is when you speak... Formal English. Anyway, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Helen, unfortunately, market, we don't have enough time. Pigeon. I know that, but this is not the market. We're talking about presentation to your, to your, of yourself to the world as you an everything. educated person. You need I will everything. not speak Pigeon English if <laughs> I go to the world to discuss. But, right. you anyway, that's you. You're <laughs> very fine. I was English. not English. No, because it doesn't require it. It mm -hmm. Even if it did require, uh, if it did, you yeah, expect us to speak no, English. If it did, you would. Anyway, Helen, you know where this is at. I never finish. So I have to okay. thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> Sorry, I wish you had a lot more time. Yes. Thank you so much for being My here. Pleasure. Apology. My pleasure. Thank you so, thank much, you so much, much for being one of us. Okay. <laughs> anyway, can I roll now? So, as you know, education is a passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Education is one thing no one can take away from you. And as the late Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. That's all we have time for you today. And remember, life is a learning curve. You've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osime. Education is transformational. From developing leaders to developing a bullish economy, education unites, equalizes, and progresses us all. Education is important, and every single Nigerian child deserves the highest quality education. To every child, every Nigerian out there today, go on learning, go on exploring, go on dreaming, go on inventing, go on making the world better for future generations. We will continue to push our dreams of greater Nigeria, starting with good leadership and critical development across the educational sector. Thank you to our guests today and to everyone watching Perspectives across the world. I'm Ola Torira Majekodumi Oniru. See you next weekend and goodbye.